clean heart. Thank the nice spirit you went for me and restored to me. Just be with, fill me with your presence, fill me with your power, I'm in need of you, fill me with your spirit, fill me with your presence, fill me with your power. Too kind for me, your love is too strong for me. I cannot tell it all. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Savior. I need your presence. Feel this temple. Be my life, Lord. Come and pray. With your presence, fill me with your power. I'm in need of you. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your power. I'm in need of you. Send your spirit, Lord. Send your Welcome to my online teaching and bless you today with this, this my single song called Feel Me, that is the title, go on YouTube, just type my name, Magdalene, Feel Me by Magdalene Ngala and the song will pop up and today I'm going to be teaching today on um, the Holy Spirit as I've been teaching throughout, I'm teaching about the Holy Spirit and today I'll be teaching the part Three of the Holy Spirit and and I'm teaching about the work of the Holy Spirit and I'm teaching on what is what I tie to the Holy Spirit anoint and basically that's what I've been teaching for the past weeks but although I do skip some weeks because of so many activities and church activities and other things but today um, I come with anointing of the holy spirit so one of the work of the holy spirit is that the holy spirit anoints when they say i didn't say annoy because there is annoyance and there is an anointing so the holy spirit anoints so what is that type of anointing we are talking about and when we talk about anointing we are not talking about in africa where people go to the witch doctor and they carry the palm oil and they rub on somebody's forehead or on the feet or wherever they rub it that they anointed you but i'm talking about the anointing of the holy spirit where we use the anointing oil which is the olive oil to anoint somebody and somebody is not just anointed by the will of men but you need to have a connection with god you need to be called by god god has to announce you before you are anointed so for for people that do um actually talk about men of God, you have to be careful. Talking about a man of God is, is a dangerous thing in a, in a believer's life and it can ruin your life, it can bring a curse because if you talk about somebody that is anointed by God, it's a curse. It doesn't matter the big sin they do, but 
There are things you just let God judge. Like I always say, I don't judge nobody. Whether you're a prostitute or an arm robber, I just preach the gospel. I don't, I don't go beyond preaching. And I'm a friend to everybody because I know that Jesus was a friend to all. So as a child of God, we are teaching the Holy Spirit so that you can understand how the Holy Spirit moves and you can try to live according to the way Christ has instituted us to live in his life. So when you have the life of Christ in you, you will live as an ambassador for Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So today, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit anointing. And the Holy Spirit anointing is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that he anoints you. So the Holy Spirit anointing. And what is anointing? Anointing is a rubbing of oil. It's a rubbing of oil. Like I said, it's not just a palm oil where they take and rub on you. That is not what we use to anoint people. So the Holy Spirit anoints us. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit is... When, when somebody, when God puts you outstanding, he instructs a man of God, a woman of God to anoint you. So what we use in the Christian domain to anoint people is the anointing oil. So like I said before, anointing, to be anointed is not a call of men. It's the call of God. So when you anoint somebody that is not called by God, and then that's where misleading doctrine comes around. That's where people mislead others because they're not called. When you are not called, when the Holy Spirit anoints you, he stays within you, he lives with you. But now when you are anointed by men, you do the doctrines of men. And that is why men, mis they're misleading. Jesus said, can the blind lead the blind? Would they not both fall in the pit? So anytime you are a man of God that is called by God, is anointed, he will do the will of God. So the Holy Spirit anoint, and I said, an anointing better still, it is a holy ritual that set one aside to perform or to accomplish kingdom principle, which is God's will. So kingdom principle is God's will. So an anointing is to help a man of God, a woman of God, a child of God in general, to accomplish a mission. So what we all know, like I thought two weeks ago, that when our Holy Spirit anoints you, he helps you to accomplish your mission. And every child of God has a mission, has a calling. And when you have a calling, you have a mission, you, you, you need the presence of the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot accomplish. When the Holy Spirit comes in a man, the first thing is to anoint the person. And today I said, so many definitions of anointing, which I gave it already, but I'm just going to give you because that is not where I'm focusing. I want to focus on two types of anointing. We have two different types of anointing. As the Holy Spirit have different ways to anoint us. And the two different types of anointing I want to talk about is anointing upon, where the Holy Spirit will set it upon you, and an anointing within, which you carry inside you. So the first anointing upon that I want to talk about is the anointing within. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit does is the first thing and that anointing within does is that it teaches us the truth. So when you have the Holy Spirit within you, so it anoints you, so it teaches you the truth. And it teaches the truth. So I want us to open our Bible to John chapter 14 verse 17. So to see what the anointing within it does. So John chapter 14 verse 17. So the Bible says in John 14, 17, it says, Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither see him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and live with you. So the holy, the anointing within has to live within you. And it, has to, it dwells with you, so it has to live within you. That's anointing within. When that anointing comes within you, so it helps you to live a life worthy, the life that is pleasing to God because it's within you. And what is this anointing within? What it does? The first thing that it does is that what? It teaches us truth. The second thing that it does is John chapter 16, verse 13. John 16, 13, it says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So he guide us. Anointing within guides you. So you see like sometimes you want, you want to backslide. You're taking a route that is not wealthy, that is not pleasing to God. The anointing within you guides you. He be like, no, this is, this is how to go about this thing. This is how to go about this thing. So it guides you into truth. The anointing within guides us into truth. What is the truth we want to hear about? Which I'll be elaborating on what is truth very soon. So, and Jesus, and Jesus was saying here, 
He said, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So the anointing with him, when he guides you into truth, he declares the things that are about to come. And, and that is the first thing. Only It doesn't only do that, it teaches you. When we are being taught of the truth about God, it's because we carry an anointing within us. So as a child of God, as a believer, you desire to have an anointing within you. That anointing within you, it helps you to know who you are and to understand God. When an anointing within dwells, when an anointing within lives with you, but it doesn't just come to live. You have to invite, you have to give room for the Holy Spirit to dwell within you. So like I said, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is to anoint you. So it's anointing within I'm talking about. So when this anointing comes within you, one thing that it does, when it lives with you, it will be your teacher. Nobody can deceive you. Nobody can fool you around. Nobody can fake. Nobody can hide with it behind the scene. So because that anointing within you teaches you. So anytime somebody wants to lie you, to mislead you, that anointing within is going to communicate to you. Be like, this is wrong. This is a lie. This person is fake. So the anointing within is there to teach us. So the second thing I want to talk about is... He show us things to come. So anointing would he show us things to come. So things to come can be in the physical things and the, the spiritual things. So what about talking about the physical things are some of the calamities that befalls us, you know, the anointing within it brings revelation. It brings revelation, it gives you vision. So the anointing within shows you things to come. It can be positive, it can be negative. So God can show you the calamity that will befall a nation, God can show you a punishment. You might be taking a, long, a, a wrong route or you maybe you're about to meet a wrong person and an anointing within you will show you that on so so and so day, something is going to happen to you. But the Bible says God should reveal to redeem. So when we are being revealed things by the help of the Holy Spirit, so it helps us to keep us on the right track so you don't fall. So that is one of the part of the the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, so that anointing within. One of the other things is in First John, first, in First John, so some people uh, do, don't need to see the, any need of having the Holy Spirit, but child of God, it is very important that you have the Holy Spirit within you, within you. And in First John, chapter 5, verse 6, the Bible says, First John chapter 5, verse 6, This is he who come by water. This is he who come by water. This is he who come, who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testify. Because the spirit is the truth. So it's the spirit of truth in us testify who Jesus is. It testifies to us the teachings of Jesus that they are real. It testifies the doctrines. It testifies the word of God is true. So this, it, that is truth. So it's the spirit of truth. That spirit that dwells within us. So, um, and it, it, it helps us to bear witness, you know. Before you go out there to minister, to evangelize, because the Holy Spirit within you is testifying. It has made you to accept the truth in Christ Jesus. That Jesus is real. He's the Son of God. And that his suffered death was risen. Rose again the third, after the third day. And he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. Interceding for you and I. This is the truth about Jesus Christ. And the truth about God himself. That above him there is no God. And beside him there is no one. So anointing. That anointing that you carry within you needs to bring this testimony. And it is a testimony that we carry that we are able to share to people. So you can't go to the world to preach about Jesus' testimony when you have not experienced the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you are born again, you are baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ. And you are baptized in the baptism of Jesus Christ. And you are, you are dying with Christ and you raise up with Christ. So now... It gives you that power. It anoints you to be able to be like, I have been there. So you are able to go out there and minister the word of God. So the spirit that you carry inside you is what is testifying. It's not you talking. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that put words for us to talk. So it testifies for us to bear witness about Christ. In John chapter 18. John chapter 18.
on. So in John 18, 35. And what does anointing within does? John 18, 35. So this this John 18 35 is actually talking about um when Jesus was arrested, he was taken to Pontius Pilate to be crucified by the people because according to their tradition, they cannot crucify somebody unless the law gives them that authority to go ahead. So Jesus was taken, and the king asked Jesus in 35, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? You are all nation and the chief priest have delivered you over to me. What have you done? In verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servant would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. In verse 37, and Pilate asked him, Then Pilate said to him, So you as king, Jesus answered, You say I am king. For this purpose i was born and for this purpose i have come into the world to bear witness to the truth everyone is of the truth everyone who is of the truth listen to my voice and pilate asked him in verse 38 what is truth after he said this he went back outside to the jews and told him i found no guilt in this man so now what is truth pilate was confused so when you don't have an anointing within you, you cannot know the truth about Jesus Christ. So the truth, he said he came. For this purpose, he came. He came for the truth. He came to speak the truth. He came by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's that spirit that dwells in us, that anoints us to continue to know the truth about God, to know the truth about the kingdom, to know the truth about who we are in Christ. Child of God, one thing I've always said is for you to know your position in Christ Jesus. When you know your position in Christ Jesus, you're going to fight so hard that nobody can get your position away from you. You're going to fight so hard that nobody can take away your position. So staying in Christ don't just be an empty verse. Stay in Christ, but stay connected with Christ. There is no way we can stay in Christ without anointing within. Because the anointing within that connects us, that connects us to Christ. Anointing within, keep God, divine presence with us. When you don't have anything inside you that glorifies God, you can have an anointing upon and God is not with you. Yes, because it's, it's a gift that is irrevocable. God has given it. You can lose it. But the anointing within, you lose it. The Holy Spirit will leave you. It will vacate. It will vanish out of your life. So keep make sure that the anointing within, that God has anointed you with, stays with you. He says truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. The Holy Spirit speaks truth. Those who carry, those of you making friends, you have friends with somebody that lie like from January to December. Lie, it just determines the type of anointing they are anointed with. Anyone that can lie and lie and glory in lie, they don't carry the, the anointing of truth. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes to you, the, as Jesus said, that is the spirit of truth. It teaches you the truth. When you know the truth, you speak the truth. I, I Actually, there is one thing that bothers me a lot in the church. Like today, people, people are, are, are learning to please their pastors, their prophets, their men of God, rather than pleasing Jesus. So, for such reason, a lot of truth have been buried in the house of God and nobody want to talk about it. Nobody want to talk about it. Nobody want to say anything about it. People don't want to offend human beings, but they don't. They care less if they offend God. But child of God, like I said, you need this anointing to live within you and it's going to help you. It's going to help you so much. So living a life of emptiness is living a life without the Holy Spirit. There is no way the Holy Spirit can dwell in a man and you are nothing. There is no way the Holy Spirit can be in you and you don't carry something. There is no way the Holy Spirit can be in you and you are not anointed. There is no way the Holy Spirit can be in you and you don't know the truth. You must know the truth. When you know the truth, the truth they are talking about is the word of God. You need to know the word of God. Nobody will deceive you if you know the word of God. Child of God, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Don't allow an interpreter. Don't allow somebody to always read the Bible to interpret it for you. Read it. The spirit of truth is the interpreter. He interprets scriptures to all of us, to the same person that is interpreting to you. Because I'm a man. I can read.
read the Bible and God interprets it to me. When I'm interpreting to you, I add my own small salt, you know, seasoning. But when, and the Holy Spirit have different dimensions of interpret, interpreting scriptures to us. So he might have something different for you. So read your Bible so that you don't fall as a prey. Read your Bible so you are not victimized. Read your Bible so somebody don't dupe you. People are crying today, left and right. Oh, I've been duped by a man of God. I've been duped by... It's not even a man of God because a man of God cannot dupe you. It is people that are called by men. When we say a man of God is a man that carries God inside him, God cannot be inside me and I dupe you. God cannot be inside a man of God and I dupe them. You can't carry the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, the spirit of truth doesn't dupe. It doesn't lie. It doesn't fake. So if somebody comes to you in the name of the Lord, and they, in the name of the Lord, and they use any doctrine apart from this one, apart from the truth in the Bible, to collect anything from you, they are not stop call, stop using it that man of God. It is not man of God. I said from the beginning that this 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 uh, kingdom calling is called only by God. But we, we are aware that men have called men to walk in this vineyard, and that is why we have a lot of uh, problem in the body of Christ because people that were not called by God they do their own thing. Some people that were called by God, in the long run, the devil also has influenced them wrongly and they have taken a different path. So, like I said, stay with the anointing. It is good and it is more healthier for you to have the anointing of God within you. Sorry about that. And it is it's, it's not only like the Bible is saying, when you have the anointing of God within you, you are more like you are more more to fight your battles more to fight your battles and to win them you are more to be to be an overcomer but guess what a lot of people are fighting and lose battles today because they don't know the truth when you don't know the truth how can you defeat lies if you don't know the truth you can't defeat lies so what the, one of the reasons where life lies conquer us we don't know the truth so be able to distinguish. Distinguish good and bad. If you have a friend, I always say it to people. A friend that lie, 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 lie all the time. Anytime they lie to you, tell them this is lies. Don't, don't be like, oh, I know it's lie. I'm just, don't compromise stuff like that. Do not do, don't compromise stuff like that. So when you carry this type of anointing, because of the truth that you're having, you share that truth with people. You need to save somebody's life. Remember, the Bible says that if somebody, if they die in that their ignorance, God is going to ask somebody's blood in your hands. So do not allow somebody's blood to be asked to be on your hands because you knew the truth and you hide it from them because you want to keep a relationship. It's better for you to, to, to tell them the truth and they hate you for the truth and your heaven is sealed than for you to lose heaven because you want to make a relationship and you 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 keep it you 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 earn a relationship and you lost your salvation. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. In First Corinthians chapter two, I'm gonna read from New Living Translation because I like what they said there. First Corinthians chapter two verse fourteen. But people who aren't spiritual cannot receive this truth from God's spirit. So you understand what they're saying? It's only spiritual people that accept spiritual things. People that are spiritual that listen to spiritual things. People that are spiritual that understand spiritual things. People that are spiritual that accept. There's a difference between listening, understanding, and accepting. There are people that listen, understand, and still refuse to accept the truth. So the Bible is warning. Paul was talking to the Corinthians here, and Paul was warning, said, warning us there are even certain things you don't have to be even talking to an unbeliever because they're never going to accept it. They never, and at the end of the day, you get upset about certain things you don't want to do. But people, they say that people who are not spiritual, they don't understand spiritual things. It, it all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means those who are spiritual so when the spirit the spirit cannot teach you the truth if you are not spiritual so the spirit teaches the truth to those who are spiritual because you don't understand by your own you don't lean on your understanding but you understand it because you are spiritual remember the bible said the lord is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so worshiping god you must worship him in spirit and in truth but how can you worship god in spirit and in truth 
when you have not accepted the spirit of truth, it is not in you and it doesn't dwell within you. So understanding the spirit of truth that is within you, it helps you to be able to bear the witness about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The second thing that anointing within does is that, that the anointing within, it, live, it helps us to live a holy life. Anointing within help us to live a holy life. Child of God, many a times we have lived a life that is unworth, unhealthy. An unhealthy life, as regarded by God, is a life that is filthy. A filthy life is a life that is displeasing to God. But the Bible is saying that when you have an anointing within you, you live a holy life. So living a holy life with you is because... You carry that anointing. When you when 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 the anointing within does not stay in you, there is no way you can ever live a, a holy life. Do you understand? So there are some of the things you are battling with. There are some of the things you are going through because you are lacking this anointing within. So as from today, pray for the Holy Spirit to live within you. When the Holy Spirit dwells in us, it anoints us to live a holy life. And I'm gonna read from Second First Corinthians chapter three. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, as we read. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Do not know. Do you not know that you, you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? So listen, I said anointing within is when the Holy Spirit anoint lives within you. So there is an anointing upon an anointing within. An anointing within what it does, it makes you a temple. So it makes you a temple for God to dwell. Remember, God does not dwell in a place that is fixed by the hands of men. So when God wants to dwell in you, you need that anointing within you to clear the way for God to dwell. And God does not dwell in a dirty temple, in a filthy temple. That is why it makes us righteous for God to dwell with us. And Paul was trying to remind the Corinthians, say, don't you know, because many a times we believers, we don't know what we carry. We don't know that we are the temple of God. And he said that, don't you know that you are a temple, that God's spirit dwells within you. So when the Holy Spirit comes within, inside you, it makes you a temple. And what is a temple? A temple is a holy place. A temple is a, a place of divine dwelling. Only God dwells in a temple. A temple is a secret place for the Lord's hiding. So it's a place of the most high, where God, where people go to seek for solutions. So God is hiding right inside you. There is anointing right inside you. That And, and, and Paul is trying, remind, reminding us today that because of the anointing of the Lord inside you, the Holy Spirit of God that he has given us, it has made you a temple. So you are now a temple. You are not just an ordinary person. You are a temple. So you understand you carry God. God dwells in you. So remember that God is a trinity. So when the, when the Holy Spirit dwells, when the Spirit of the Lord dwells, God himself dwells there. Jesus is there. So they don't walk this thing from each other. They walk in unity. So the, the, the trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So it makes you a temple. So the Holy Spirit clears away. It cleans away. It makes a way for the Father himself and the Son to come and dwell within us. Praise the Lord Jesus. So that was what Paul was reminding. Do you not know that you are body? That you, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? In verse 17, he said, If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and you are the temple. So it's you and I, we are the temple. So we got to be careful. Destroying God's temple is sin, you know. A lot of people thinking of temple fornication, they are baby Christian. Lies is destroying God's temple. Hypocrisy, hatred, all manner of things you can name the rest. So destroying God's temple is not only about adultery and fornication. If you gossip, if you lie, you destroy God's temple. List the child of God. We are talking about the physical temple and the spiritual temple. The physical temple is the house of the Lord. Those who are destroying the house of the Lord, God is going to destroy them. Listen, Jesus got angry, entered the temple, and Jesus saw that the things that were supposed to be done in that temple have been contradicted by the hands of men. What were men doing? The Bible says that men were buying and selling doves in the temple of the Lord, and Jesus got angry because there is only one thing that is supposed to be done in the house of the Lord is holiness. 
So like I said, the, the temple of the Lord is, is spiritual and the physical. So the physical part is this place of worship where we go to worship. It's a temple of God and God dwells there. Now, in the house of the Lord, there are things that are prohibited to be happening because of his divine presence. And God does not go with iniquity. So the things that go wrong in the church, people were buying, people were selling. Listen, child of God, I have another advice for you. There are people that make their video every day on social media just to ruin men of God. Do not be a part of that. Because whatever somebody was selling in that temple, there is a buyer. You might have bought a wrong thing. You might have bought a wrong product. There are products that you buy, you put on your skin. It, it, it contaminates your skin. So be careful to listen to all these people that call themselves believers. The scripture teaches us the spirit of God. We should be careful the way we rebuke. When you rebuke, rebuke in correction so that you don't also sin. By rebuking somebody, you're already judging the person. That's a sin because Jesus did not make us judges. I only know of one judge is Jesus. And it's not even time for judgment yet. So, in that temple, people were buying and people were selling. In the house of God today, in the Christian world, people buy to bring man of God down. People buy to criticize. So, you are, people sell it and people buy it. Whatever you buy, sell, there is always a buyer. But be careful what you are buying and be careful what you are selling. If you are the seller, be careful. One criticism that you are criticizing a man of God and another believer that is lower in faith buys it. And they give up on their faith. They go back to the world. You, for that soul that you have contributed to loss, you are going to give an account to Jesus Christ on the last day. What happened to it? Remember, Jesus said, Jesus said that the will of the Father is that of all that he has given me that I should lose nothing on the last day, but should be able to raise it. Whatever we're doing, if somebody loses their salvation because of you, believe me, if you are a believer, stay out of all this or the majority of those people that come online criticizing, we are the same kingdom. So in the same kingdom, if, if one has fallen, let us bring the person up with, with a good, with the love of Christ. You fall, sometimes we are criticizing those people that they have already begged for mercy and God has forgiven them a long time ago. And then you are there every day on social media. A lot of people today, they want to be public. That's why they just go anywhere and make anything put on YouTube because they want it to be public. But be careful. Be careful what you are selling. What you sell, somebody is going to buy it. Don't be a seller of evil. Sell good things. Sell the truth. Give somebody Jesus. Give somebody the Holy Spirit. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. So we move forward. So and Jesus turned. The Bible said Jesus got angry because the things that were going on in the, in the temple were things that are not supposed to be going on. Because the purpose of the temple was for people to come and pray. It was for people to seek solutions to their problems. But you see that men turned the temple into their business. It became a business center where people glory in coming to buy and sell and people to exchange doves and money changers. People come and change money for business. And Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus entered the temple. Bam, the first thing Jesus did, he got angry. He, he drew people out of the temple. He drew those people who were doing the business and he turned the, the tables of the money changers upside down. And he did that just on silence without saying a word. And Jesus carried actions with no word. After he had done that, he went ahead to ask them, Don't you know, for it is written, that my house shall be called a house of prayers. So, and ye have turned into a den of robbery. So the purpose of the temple is for prayers. The purpose of the house of God is for us to pray. Prayers. For us to glorify God. For us to worship God. You, dancing is prayers. When you dance to the glory of God. Worship is prayers. Praises are prayers. Bible study. Everything you do in the house of God. That is to glorify God. So listen child of God. God is looking for people that will enter into those temples. And turn the money. The table of the money changers. Turn it upside down. Wherever you are worshiping God. Anything that is not right. Call the pastor beside. Tell the pastor that pastor this is not good. This thing you are doing is not right. Somebody should tell you never question authority. It is the house of your father. Really? Remember in that temple. Nobody saw any wrong thing in what, G in what they were doing. Because everybody was interested in selling and buying. Why? Because they lacked the spirit of truth inside them. They lacked the spirit of why the temple was created. So they saw the temple as a business institution where people have to sell and the, the house of God 
meaning was transformed by men. But nobody saw any wrong thing. We don't know how long that business was going on in the temple until Jesus showed up in the scene. And Jesus is making us to understand that no business should be cunning. Stop buying water. Buy, stop buying other things in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is made for prayers. And a den of robbery is... Do you know what I mean by den of robbery? That we have turned his house to a den of robbery is like the capital of armed robbery. So the house of God is where most... The, like... Like commanders of robbery are staying the capital where where you want to see somebody. Why should we need a house of robbery? A, a den of robbery. Now, in this temple, which is your body, Paul was saying the same thing. We should not destroy this temple. The temple is two: the physical temple, which is the house of the Lord, and the spiritual temple, which is your body. Do not destroy it. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I pray that God will give you an understanding and the truth. When you know the truth, the truth will make us free. By making us free, it needs to live with us for us to know him. So all you need to do is just give a room so that he will come and live with you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When the spirit of the Most High lives in you, it makes you a temple. You become a temple. The temple is known for its... You remember, the temple is known for its building material. You know, they don't build a temple with any kind of rocks any kind of material. Temple material are selective. So they select those materials before they build a temple. And it has a model the way they build it. So it's, it's huge, it's holy. So it is not just anything that you can look into and be like, oh God, this is this. No, temple is fine material. Fine material. Things constructed. Div and then the divine presence of God is what matters that is there. So you know you were constructed with fine materials from the throne of God's grace. God created you beautifully, fearfully made, wonderfully made, fearfully made. You are beautiful, you are handsome. And for that reason, God wants us to stay with the beauty of creation, with his divine, because it is God himself. Remember that he made all in us in his image and his likeness. So the way you are beautiful and the way you are handsome is the divine nature of God you carry. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you, when, when you carry the divine nature of God, that is why the Bible says, is asking us to live the life of Christ. Well, the divine nature of God in us, it helps us to overcome the things Jesus overcame. Jesus overcame temptation, sin, and all the lights. It makes you to have divine powers. It makes you to be able to heal the sick, to raise the dead. So what Jesus did, you do it because of his divine nature inside you. So you carry it. And that was the purpose he gave us. Jesus said, it is good if you knew. You would be happy that I'm going away. Because he was sending his spirit to dwell, to live within us. Praise Master Jesus Christ. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10 to 11, the temple of the Lord was also made for this purpose. You can see how God destroyed temples, why God can reject a temple. If the temple, when the glory, when the temple does not please God, his glory would vanish, will vacate. The glory of the Lord can leave a temple. When you start doing your own thing, the glory leaves. So Jesus was going about and defying the churches of God because people have turned the house of the Lord in what they want because of the lack of the Holy Spirit. They don't have truth in them. They do things to please themselves. They do, do things to ruin people, to do people. And that is what, even today, people still do it. There are people that be, they, they, they worship men of God. They don't worship their God. You see people worship men of God. They don't worship God. But you got to be careful. When you submit under a man of God, he cannot be your God. He can. He's your mentor. By divine reasons. So, do not exchange the place of Christ in your life or the place of place of your spiritual father. Love your spiritual father. Respect them. Honor them. Give them the honor due. But do not take the place of Christ and put it inside their lives and take their lives and put it in Christ. Don't do that. It's not. It's not. You are mixing certain things there. So, in first, we all God and in, in, in first Peter, so let me go to Romans, 1 Peter.
in first Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter 2 verse 9, the Bible tells us that but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light, child of God. An anointing within makes you a priesthood. So because you pertain to the kingdom, to the kingdom of heaven, so now you are a priest. And we are here priest with Christ Jesus. So you cannot be a priest on your own. It is because you are a son in the kingdom. It is because you are a daughter in the kingdom. So now, but God is the one that has chosen you. If God has chosen you, God, we own God in respect. We own God, we owe God to live a holy life acceptable unto him. If God has chosen you, we owe him a lot of respect. We owe him just to have his spirit. There is nothing that God is asking us more than what we can give him. God is not asking you to give him blood like the demons are asking us for blood, sucking for blood. God is not asking you to die an untimely death. God is not asking you to go and destroy some ruin, cause a plane to have an accident. God is asking you to give him the honor, to give him the respect, to love him. So now you are a chosen people. He did not only choose you, he made you a temple. So you are the temple of God and God is in you. So if somebody makes you feel like, so nobody should disqualify you. Nobody should ever disqualify you. If you are fallen, if you are falling in one way or the other, God has the power to lift you up. I tell people, don't look on your sins. Look unto God. If you look on your sin and look on men, men will pull you down. Men will press you to stay up in that sin. But when you sin and you look unto Jesus, you are able to rise up. Seven times you shall fall, seven times you will rise up again. Don't allow anybody to make you feel unworthy. There are people that, that think that they can choose citizens of this kingdom. It's a lie. Only Jesus is the prince. He said all powers has been given unto him. So Jesus is the one that God will bring them to him and he will choose. So Jesus is the one choosing. Don't allow anything. Any life you are living, cry to God if you are, if you... If you think you are, you are still working on something in your life that you need God spiritually, His grace is always sufficient. His grace is always sufficient. So you are a chosen people. God has chosen you. It doesn't matter your limitation. It doesn't matter what you are going through. When God chooses you, God will be with you. All you need to do, if the Spirit has left you because of one mistake or the other, there is still a possibility the Spirit can come back only if you invite Him. Call Him and be like, Holy Spirit, I need you more. I need you back into my life. Come into my life. Make a difference. Make transformation. Come and dwell. I want you to live within me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is one of the things... Um, in Romans, Romans chapter 8, in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, starting from verse 8 to 16, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So you know, a lot of people are so much in the flesh nowadays. Be careful who, who, who you listen to on the social media. All those people that go out there to crucify churches, crucify men of God. Do you know that you are crucifying Christ when you do those things? Because somebody that is spiritually weak is going to buy your ideas and they'll be like, I'm not going to church again. So I tell people, be careful what you are selling. What you are selling and somebody buy you, you give an account to Jesus. So Paul is saying that you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, anointing within. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. So when the spirit within comes, it makes us to walk in the spirit. It makes us to disappear from the flesh. You come out of the flesh and you enter the spirit realm. And that is why the, the Paul is saying that in the, to the Romans that when you disappear from the flesh and you enter the spirit realm, now you begin to understand in the spirits. You begin to reason in the spirit. You walk in the spirit. For you cannot serve God in the flesh. You won't understand it. So you want to serve God mightily and be with God. Enter in the spirit realm. So it's only the spirit. If the spirit dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. So many have come out there. We have seen their spirit, but we have, we have hold on to their prophecy, even though they don't have the spirit of God. We are still with them, but they don't belong to Christ. Remember, 
You are not out there to look on a prophecy and stick to a man of God. You are there to look to a man of God that has the spirit of God within them. Because it's your life that matters. If you miss heaven, it's not an excuse. If on the last day you are being misled, ignorance is not an excuse on a judgment day. So don't be like a foolish virgin where Jesus said, gave the parable of the, the ten virgins, you know, that does not know that they have to carry their extra oil. But don't follow the blind. So, in verse 10, he said, But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the spirit within us gives us life. The life of peace. And it kills your flesh. So, you know, when you are in the mood to, to be sexually immoral, it's the spirit within that kills the flesh. So it Kill your flesh so you don't feel those emotions. People will tell you, oh, you need to be, but you, you feel like, I don't even want a man, I don't want a woman. And you're asking yourself, what is the spirit of God? It kills it. It just want to keep you safe and keeps you from not falling apart. So it kills your emotions. So one of the things the spirit within does, it kills our emotions. Emotions, I mean emotions. I don't mean emotions where, where you have to have emotions for people that are like Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Not emotions to be merciful. I mean those emotions that are desire of the world. Things that make you to desire worldly things. To desire things that will make you to fail. You know? But it kills those emotions. So, and, and the Bible continues that if the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the through his spirit who dwells in you. So the spirit gives life. The life of peace, the good health is the spirit of truth. It dwells in us and it lives with us. It gives us life. Child of God, you have been looking for life so much. You have been, the life is not far from you. It's within the Holy Spirit. It dwells in you. It lives with you and it will stay with you. And it is there to keep your mortal body quicken so that nobody can come and activate. If somebody turn it, if somebody is there remote controlling your body to be active in a way that you are even, you don't like it, the Holy Spirit has that remote to just switch it off. And your body can be switched off till when you meet the right person, your body can be switched off. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So that spirit that dwells with you is what is leading you emotionally, morally to do certain things, you know. It has to be in you. So it leads you. And it's that spirit that is within us. It has quickened our mother body. It makes us to live a righteous life. So it helps us to cry up our Father. If you stand before God now today and you are like, God, my Father, is that spirit of the Father in us that makes you, that qualifies you. The spirit of God qualifies us. To stand in that test and to be able to call God our Father. So, we all as Christians have a duty to give honor and to, to God by the way we live. The way you live, make sure it pleases God and give God the honor the way you live. The, the third thing that anointing within does, the anointing within teaches, it teaches John chapter 14. Anointing within teaches us. And what does it actually teach us? Is what we have to know. John chapter 14. Verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have seen said to you. So the... the uh, the anointing within comes there to teach us all things. And Jesus speaking in John 14, sorry, John 14, 23, he said, Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home within him. So an anointing teaches us to love God. When we love God, it comes from within. And when, when it comes from within, when you should love, God comes now and dwells within us. He dwells inside you. Jesus said, the Father and I, we will come and live inside you. So remember, 
that the Holy Spirit is already there teaching you. So now when he teaches you and you accept the truth about the word of God, he will now bring the Father and the Son to come and join him the, in your life and he will make your life a difference. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Master Jesus. In John chapter 16, verse 13, John 16, 13, the anointing, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not take, speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. Like I said, this anointing within guide us. He declares things to come to us. He doesn't speak on himself. So he, went to, he goes to Jesus. Master, what are you saying? What are you saying? What do you have for your people? And he will take from Jesus. He come and communicate to us. So how is he going to communicate to you if you don't have intimacy with him, if you don't have a relationship with him, if you don't, if you don't create that room for him to live with you? So that anointing within you, you need to create a room for that anointing to live within you. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 23, the, Bible, the Holy Spirit helps believers to understand what is right and what is wrong and is also this anointing that teaches. It, this type of anointing is an anointing that teaches. So when you are anointed, the anointing will teach you. And John was saying that for you, this anointing will teach you. You don't need anybody to teach you. You don't need anybody to come and tell you things that you don't know. But when you are being anointed, this anointing teaches you everything that you need to know. The things, it teaches you the truth. It teaches you the righteousness of God. It teaches you your own success. It teaches you how to lead, how to move about, how to run this kingdom race without falling, without being weary, without backsliding. Like sometimes, you know, we run, there are, there are those seasons that the devil can encamp our lives with all kinds of frustration, depression, confusion. But when the Spirit of God is in you, it will always teach you that you can do it. It will keep you into remembrance that God has not allowed you alone. And this battle, you are not in this battle alone because Christ is fighting the battle for you. So as a child of God, when you are fighting a battle, know that you are not alone. There is an anointing that will teach you the right weapon to use the right way to use, the right approach to use, the route to take, the way to take, the transportation you need in order to be victorious. And your hiding place, this anointing teaches you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four thing this anointing does is anointing would it mix us to stand firm in Christ Jesus. Child of God, standing firm has been a big issue, a bigger, 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 bigger issue. Like because... We stand firm today, tomorrow we backslide, after tomorrow we stand firm, then the next tomorrow we are down. But what is that anointing that is going to make you to stay firmly in God, consistent in Christ Jesus, without moving left and right, without going left and right? What is this anointing all about? And, and I'm taking you to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. So, I'll, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'll start from 20 to 22. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we alter our amen to God for his glory. In verse 21, it says, and it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. So God is the only one that establishes us and anointing establishes us. It anoints us. So, and, and, but I call God to witness against, so uh, 22. In verse 22, he said, and who, or who has also put his seal on us and given us 
his spirit in our heart as a guarantee. So the, the anointing within guarantees our lives. It guarantees the promises of God for us. It guarantees that the promises of God never fails. The promises of God never disappoint. So when you carry the spirit, there is a guarantee that your life, it might seem so difficult. It might seem so ugly. It might seem so bad now. But believe me, that when you stand strong, you stand firm, there is a guarantee of success. There is a guarantee of a, a bigger testimony. There is a guarantee of glory, of honor. You will be victorious. Don't overlook. Don't overestimate your battle. Stand firm. Fight those battles. Battles going to come. Trials going to come. The tribulations, afflictions will rise many times. Everything. You will feel at the time that the whole world has crushed. But the Bible says when you carry an anointing, it keeps you firm in the Lord. And that is why the Bible says that for they that wait upon the Lord, the Lord, they shall renew their strength. It's not God renewing our strength, it's us. How do we renew our strength with the word the scripture? Because the anointing keeps us in remembrance. So remember that God has not just allowed you to fight those battles and Lord Jesus is fighting your battles. You can never go into the battlefields with Jesus and you be a loser. You can never go into the battlefield with Jesus and you don't win your battles. You can never go into the battlefield with Jesus and you don't conquer. When we go to the battlefield with Jesus, we wear a crown. There's a crown of victory in every battle you are fighting and you are standing firm in Christ Jesus. Being unshakable, being unmovable, doesn't matter the degree of the problems. God is not a loser. God will never lose. Some of us, we carry heavy, heavy load, heavy ladder, you know, that is just because of faith, we keep moving. If you have faith, you will move mountains. If you have faith, you cannot go down. You will look at every other thing surrounding your premises and you will look down on it. Because at the end of the day, you cannot fight your battles by yourself. You can never win it. Money cannot stop battles in your life. Ask the rich. They are rich. But the battles, they're still fighting a lot. The same way, likewise, the poor, they are poor and they have battles a lot. Every woman, every man born of a woman has battles. As long as you live on this earth, you cannot escape battles. They will come. But stand firm. By the power of the anointing, you will overcome it in the name of Jesus. By the power of the anointing of the Lord, I say you will overcome it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms talks to us about standing firm in the anointing. The anointing that makes us to stand firm in the Lord. Psalms 45 verse 7. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with, with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond. The Bible has specifically used this beyond. So beyond is something you can comprehend. Beyond is something that has gone more than your expectation. Beyond is something that man cannot speak about it. It's beyond man's understanding. So it's, it's the Bible, what is it saying there? It's saying that God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Beyond your companions. Do you understand that it's beyond your companions? There is an anointing. God has anointed us with a certain life that we need to live cheerfully, happily, appreciable. One thing is you want this oil of gladness to overflow. You've got to learn to appreciate God for the, what he has done and what he's doing and what he's about to do. Many a times, believers, we don't appreciate God. All we do, we bug God with our problems. We don't... And when... Sorry, when calamity comes, when small wind blow our life, we, we begin to blame God and we start questioning God. That is, that is a, a, a time where you don't even have to question God. But you just have to stand firm and know that the word of God does not fail. It does not disappoint and it does not lie. Praise Master Jesus Christ. It establishes the fruit in us. In Galatians, anointing within establishes the fruit, fruit in us. Last two weeks, I thought about the fruit of the Spirit. The anointing within us help us to be able to bear the fruits that look like the fruits of the vine that we are stick to. Remember, you are not only stick to any type of a tree. You are not only stick to any type of a vine. It's a specific vine and that vine is called Jesus. 
So every fruit as a child of God that you need to bear that fruit that looks like the vine you are stick on. And it is only the anointing within that is going to help you to bear the fruit. Two weeks ago, I said something that you can be stick to this vine and you are bearing darkness. A mango tree cannot bear an avocado fruit. It only bears where it sticks to. So a branch must bear the fruit of the vine. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. But what I know is that in John chapter 15, verse 2, even in verse, verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. One thing I know is that God has dressed our lives with beautiful clothes. God has dressed us with a beautiful garment. Whatever garment we are wearing today that is causing afflictions in our life is not it's not the garment. Somebody has contaminated. Somebody has put another garment and is shedding that garment out. God has so for us from the origin. But there is one person that can unveil your garment of success, your garment of beauty. There is a star shining your way. But what, you'll be asking yourself, why is it that all my efforts are in vain? Because somebody is covering your star. You are wearing a garment of disappointment. And if God be, is a vine dresser, God dresses us with good things. God dresses us with beautiful things. But in order for you to bear that good fruits, in order for you to keep on with the garment, you need to have the Holy Spirit within you. And that is where the fruits of the Spirit come from. In John chapter 7, John 7 verse 30, 37, 38 to 39, Jesus was actually the one speaking. And Jesus said, as they that believe him, as many as believe him, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Child of God, our life is flourishing with a life, a diversified life. But when there is problem coming from the north, from the east, from the south, there is disbelief. With the disbelief in us, the Holy Spirit has no business with us. It leaves us because we don't believe in the person he's introducing to us. So why will he live with us? So it leaves. All you need to do is to believe Jesus. Believe in the Son of God and you shall be free. Believe in his power. Believe in his name. Believe in his kingdom. Believe in his Father. Believe everything he has told you. Everything will be fine. Everything will be okay. Life is going to be fine. The most beautiful life you will live is in heaven. It's not even on earth. We are not striking for earthly things. For you are both earth. So we strive for heavenly things. We striking to make heaven. And I know that you will not miss heaven in the name of Jesus. I know that your strike will not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. In John chapter 4 verse 14. Jesus referred to all the benefits. The souls which embraces him shall receive. John chapter 4 verse 14. You understand? When we embrace Jesus in us, there is always a benefit. There is no loss. There is no loss in following Christ. There is no loss in giving our lives. There is no loss in believing in him. There is no loss in preaching the gospel. Anyone that believes in Jesus Christ, there is a benefit. And in John chapter 4, verse 14, what was this benefit what Jesus was talking about? And he assures us of a benefit. John 4, 14. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him, inside you, a spring of well, welling up to eternal life. So the, the water that Jesus wants us to drink is only the one he gives us. He said it's a spring. That, that, that symbolizes our, our abundance, our overflow. So he said, if it's a well, you know that a well is where people come to fetch water. So it's coming from underneath. So it's, that is the type of life that God has given us if we believe in him. The life is already there. It's just us to believe. You believe, you grab it. Whoever believes, he will never have hunger. You are being hungry to have a good life, a healthy life, a peaceful life. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the Son of God. There is hope for the future in Christ Jesus. You, when you believe in him, he said there shall be well of living water sprinkling out of your belly. 
it will spring out of your belly, spring out of your life. Well of what financial water will spring out of your life. Believe. If you, some of us, that is why it's good to preach the gospel with a testimony. Because if God has not transformed your life from a poor kid to a better person, you won't. Somebody will look at you and be like, oh, hell. She's talking about God. Look at her life. But when people that knew you before, and they come to see the glory of God that has taken you from nobody to somebody, child of God, you don't need to be having a degree for God to take you to a, 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 a place where you don't merit. All you need is just grace, mercy. You can cry for the mercy of God. I cry for the mercy of God. You understand? When I used to be in Africa, in my village, I used to trek. When I was a kid, I would trek a distance, like an hour to go to school. Trekking. So, a, a daughter from a poor family is my testimony. Literally, you don't know you can be somewhere tomorrow and you're just looking at life and you're underestimating it. You're like, who can? I don't have... I don't go to school that much that time. But I grew up to deny certain prophecy. I'm like, even though I come from a poor family, yes. But you know, I don't put a blame on my father or my mother. I don't never put a blame on them. I love them. Oh my God. I love them with all my heart. And I always tell God that I don't blame God for coming out of a family or such. Mm -mm. I thank God because maybe if I was a rich girl, I wouldn't have known Jesus because I would be arrogant because of riches. But listen to me, child of God, and a little testimony. We will trek like 30 minutes to go fetch water, and you don't know how many times you're going to fetch water. And we go to school an hour, and you come back, you have to go to the farm. You don't use a car. Literally, you don't know that one day you're going to own a car. We see cars. It was in the village, you could count people that have a car. Literally, you don't know what God is planning for you. But there is always something God is planning that we don't even ask for. That is why the Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundance more than what you have asked for. I never asked God to move me from Africa and bring me to America. I never did that. But when God showed me that I was going to travel, I didn't even believe it. I, because I, I was looking at my background and I'm like, how can this be possible? But with man, it is very impossible. But with God, all things are possible. But you know, coming to, into a place of this, I, the struggles that I used to go through and I put my focus, it wasn't funny. The first month, the first year, the second year in the United States, the third year, it wasn't funny. The third, the fifth, it wasn't funny. But I don't give up on God. Sometimes I go into my room, I cry to Jesus. I say, Father, I know what you promised me. You promised me that you will be with me. I had my faith. I had my personal faith. You can create your own personal faith. And that is the spirit within you that helps you. Because I made room. I look unto Jesus. I never, as a child, lost faith. I don't want somebody to read. I used to read my Bible, even as a child. And I would go and steal my father's Bible. It wasn't actually a Bible, but the book of Psalms. It was a big book like this. And, and it's written in the book of Psalms. So it's a big book. I will be reading it during the day. And sometimes I can't even pronounce some of the words, but the one thing I can pick, I can pick it. And I will do it, I will run and go and, pick, and put it back there, you know. But you know, God pulled me out of all that. And made me a shining star. You know, I call myself a shining star. Some of you will be like, what do you have that? You call yourself a star, but if you know it, if you know it, you will say God is good all the time. We eat food with no oil. We add things with nothing. We use palm oil for body lotion. Okay, well, listen to me and listen, child of God. But today, it is just God's grace. The way this thing is working is grace. Where you were last year, God is not going. Our God is a God of transformation. Maybe you started your business last year. It didn't give well. Don't give up. Involve God in your matter. The spirit of God has every capacity to move that mountain that is blocking your business. Don't give up. And sometimes do not look that other people are prospering in business. You are putting much effort. It might not be your turn. It might not be your season. For every musician, they have their season. And when their season is out of season, another person will take over. 
No matter how you have tried many times you have fallen, keep on. God will remember you. And when God remember you, he said, for the delay, I will restore double. There is always a double blessing when we don't give up on God. And sometimes God might delay just to see how far we can continue with this journey. The Holy Spirit help us to continue to stand and give us the life that we desire to live. Some people might have concluded on, you, on, your, on your situation. Some people might have condemned your way of living. God has not condemned us. God has not given up on you. Keep on with the faith. And God will move your mountains. God will move you to a standard you don't, ex ex you don't expect. I don't expect to be where I am today. But I know that I'm not where I was. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I'm not where I was. But I'm somewhere more better than where I was 30 years ago. More better than where I was 20 years ago. More better than where I was yesterday. I am. And I know you are too. Because God does not discriminate. His love is not discriminative. So what are the other things the Holy Spirit does? So the, 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 the soul which receive. And a soul without God's spirit is like a dry land. Every spirit that does not have the, the Holy Spirit in them is a dry land. It live a life of dryness. Meaning that when a, when a land is dry, it cannot yield fruit. No increase. Emptiness. You can't bear fruit. You can't cultivate. It's a desert. People suffer in the desert to have food to eat, to see rain fall, to see vegetation. That is how the Bible has classified a soul that is without the Holy Spirit. But I know that by divine reasoning and because you are a chosen generation, you cannot live a dry life. You cannot live a dry life. When we live a dry life, that is where calamity comes. That is where stress comes. That is where tribulation comes. That is where depression comes. That is where pain is coming. That is where the, the devil comes to, to, to teach us a different doctrine. When we live a dry life, that is where there is division in the family. When we live a dry life, the, the devil will come with his own lies to deceive us, to tell you that you can't make it. Don't allow dryness in your life. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to water your life and to give a meaning to your life. When God pours his blessing, he showers his blessing in your life with the Holy Spirit, there must be a tremendous turnaround. There must be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. Like I said, you will never serve God and God in vain. There is a reward for every minute, every second, every time that you have used to serve God, there is a reward. And God will reward you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. In other words, nothing can make our desire manifest apart from us accepting to dream of what Jesus is offering to us. Jesus is offering something to us. He said, I am the living bread. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. You understand all those things. He said, whoever drinks, accept the Lord. Don't go to get all these things the world is giving us. The world has made us to be drunk in sin. The world has made us to be drunk in fear. The world has made us to be drunk in, in evil hopes. The world has made us to be drunk in materialistic things. But be drunk in the spirit of God. Be drunk in the things of the kingdom. Be drunk. In the love of Christ, be drunk. In your long suffering, still be drunk in the hope that the same spirit that took Jesus in the wilderness, he was hungry and tested 40 days and 40 nights and he did not give up. You carry that same spirit that help you to stay in the days of trials. You won't give up in the name of Jesus. The number five thing I want to talk about today and I will end. And the next week, I will talk about the anointing without. Is the, the anointing within makes us a born again. A born again. Anointing within us. Oh, it sounds weird. Anointing within us makes us a born again. Hmm. In John chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, 
a man came to Jesus called, there was a man of the, it was a Pharisee named Nicodemus and a ruler of the Jews. The Bible say he was a ruler. He was a Pharisee and he was a ruler. He came to Jesus. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God and no one can do these things that thou doest unless God is with him. Okay, child of God, listen. There is something Nicodemus was saying. Nicodemus was looking at the manifestation of the gift of the spirit inside Jesus. And he said, we know that a man cannot perform such miracles. A man cannot heal the sick. A man cannot command. A man cannot feed 5,000 people. You understand? Just with small loaves of fishes and bread. We know a man can't do that unless God be with him. He was looking at the prophetic of Jesus. But to, the, to my greatest surprise here, which the majority of us are looking at, Jesus told him, you got it wrong, my son. You got it wrong. He said, you... And Jesus answered in verse 3. Jesus said, answered him, truly, truly. Meaning that the truth of the matter, this is the, the binding truth. I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Does those things make any similarity? Somebody is talking about your power. You're talking about a kingdom. It doesn't make any similarity. There is no similarity in those two things that he's talking about. But there is. So Jesus wants us not to focus on the prophetic part because it's not the prophetic that is making you a born again. It's not the prophetic that guarantees your heaven. You are not following a man of God because of the prophetic. You are not following a man of God that has the prophetic without the word. Sorry, that's not actually what I want to say. But you are not following a man of God. And your intention, you are looking at the prophetic. But you are following a man of God because he carries the word of God. Listen. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, meaning that Nicodemus, you are looking at the things of this world. You are looking at the physical thing, but you lack the spiritual things that you because you are not looking at the spiritual thing. You are not a born again. You are looking at what I'm doing as a prophet. But the things that will take you to heaven are the spiritual thing, which we call them a born again. And Nicodemus was confused. Many of us today, we are confused about a born again. Many of us, we don't understand. You see somebody say, I'm a born again. We don't understand the dimension, the operation of a born again. As a born again comes with different activities. It comes with an expectation. When you are a born again, what are the things you are supposed to do that qualifies you as a born again? A born again is not a church goer. A born again is not somebody that read the Bible. A born again is not somebody that worship or sing to God. No. A born again is somebody that has allowed God to break them. They are broken spiritually. That's a born again. They live a spirit-filled life. They live a life of forgiveness. They live a life of love. They live a life of unity. They have the fruits of the spirit within them. A born again. I go back to here. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. In verse 4, Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can I be born again when he is old? How can a man be born again when he is old? Should he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Verse 5, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You lack the spirit of God inside you. You don't, like, I'm teaching about the Holy Spirit. When we, Jesus said, unless a man be born again by water and by the Holy Spirit, the first thing that qualifies you to be born again is baptism. You have to be baptized. Like I said, you have to be immense. Baptism is by immersion. Baptism is not by the pouring of the cup. Child of God, many people have refused to accept the truth even when we read the Bible. If you are in that category, why do you still think that I was already baptized by the pouring of the cup. You are not yet a born again. A born again is somebody that is, does not argue what Jesus said. You can argue the things of men, but any word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, we don't argue it. Jesus said you must be born by water and by the Holy Spirit. 
You must be baptized. What is the baptism he talk about? He mentioned you must be died inside water and raised up. You must be buried inside water. Listen, all your head, all your body must enter like you are swimming. Like you dive inside the lake and you come up. That's baptism. Not the pouring of the cup. Not carry water in a bowl and pour in your cup. That is not baptism. That's not baptism. That's the baptism of a man. A man made baptism. And remember, God has warned us not to add or to subtract anything. Those of you who are abiding to the truth because you feel that you are so, you are, people are so dogmatic, so religious and spiritual. You are religious, you are not spiritual. But I first said that for the Lord is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When we refuse to accept the truth that the Bible is teaching us, we are rebelling against God. We are rebelling against his doctrine. So Nicodemus asked the question, Jesus said, you be born of water and the Holy Spirit. Number two, how should you be born of the Holy Spirit? You must accept the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where the Holy Spirit come in us. So he anoint us upon and within. And that is where I'm preaching today. I'm teaching anointing within. And next week, I'll be teaching anointing without and the purpose. So anointing within is for purification, is for edification. Is to make you righteous, is to make you holy, is to make you humble, is to create an intimacy with God, is to make you make heaven. That is the anointing. Anointing within you is to make you bear fruit. That people will sit and give glory to God. That people will look at you and they, they see the reason why they have to be born again. They don't have to be a Christian. That is an anointing within. The work of the anointing within. So when we don't understand, we will ask questions like Nicodemus. When we refuse, at least Nicodemus asked the question and was ready. There are people today that ask the question and say they are not ready to do that. In Romans chapter 8, which I read before, I read Romans 8 before. So I'll just read chapter 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So the spirit, to be a born again, you live in the spirit life. You live, you walk according to the spirit. You speak according to the spirit. You speak the mind of God. And today, I just want to take this last opportunity to advise somebody and to encourage you in whatever you're doing. If I've been able to withstand all my trials, temptation in life, it's because I allow the Holy Spirit to always be with me. And I fight. It's a fight. It's a battle. You have to fight for him to stay with you. You have to give God every reason you think that you need him, that he has to stay. Even in your mistakes. We do mistakes every day. We sin every minute, every second. But why do you think that, it, why, do you, why do you think qualifies this anointing to stay within you? It's God's grace. Is you accepting that you are poor in spirit? Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. When you know that you need the spirit and you are poor because you can do it, you are blessed. That's where He come to do us. Thank you all for watching and thank you for listening. I pray that this teaching will make a difference out of your life and that the spirit within will come to make you more righteous than what God has promised us to be. Remember, Jesus told the disciples that unless your righteousness surpasses the righteousness of the Pharisees, ye can by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is a righteousness that because you know the truth, and I know the truth, God is expecting from us to live a certain standard, a higher standard with Christ Jesus because we know the truth. So he told the disciple, unless your righteousness surpasses, so as a child of God, your righteousness must be above the righteousness of an unbeliever. You, an unbeliever cannot be righteous like this, and you are righteous like this. So you are, unless your righteousness surpasses, so it passes, it's above, it's beyond the one that an unbeliever does, you can by no means. So there's a danger for us if we do not overshadow the righteousness of unbelievers. The right, the un, it means that unbelievers do righteousness too. So they can give, they can love, they can forgive, so we can forgive more. 
We can love more than them. We can let go more than them. They can do things we, we should do better than them because we carry the spirit they don't carry. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all for coming. Don't forget to watch my, my, my song. Feel me. Go on YouTube. I'm working on it. That The video is going to be out very soon and it's going to be beautiful. May the Lord richly bless you and impact your life with the, His Spirit. Let, let the divine presence of God saturate your inner, inner person. May you experience this divine presence of God that lives with you anywhere you go, whatever you do. May the Lord be inside you and be in your life from henceforth and forevermore. I pray for you in the name that is above every other name. Whatever you have desire for the Holy Spirit to do in your life and to manifest in your life, that that gift, that desire which is of the will of God, it will come into your life in a hurry in the name of Jesus. I pray for you that whatever has been occupying a space in your belly, Occupying the space of the Holy Spirit, that the God that fight our battles will remove everything in your body that does not give God the glory that is occupying the space of, and the Holy Spirit will come, and the Lord Himself will make His dwelling place in your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, child of God, that as you carry the Spirit inside you, out of your belly, there shall be an abundance, there shall be overflow. Well of living water will flow out of your belly. The things you could not do, you will do things that no man has done. You will do things that your generation has not done because of his divine presence. And you will be you will be announced. Your voice must be heard in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible has assured us and God has assured us that we cannot carry his spirit and be empty. I decree and I declare today in your life that no more spiritual emptiness. You will carry Jesus inside you. will carry the Father inside you. And Jesus has promised that the Father and him will come and make their dwelling place. As from today, henceforth, God in his divine nature will dwell inside you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are richly blessed. You are blessed. You are going out. You are coming in. Stay tuned. I love you all with the love of Christ. And I know that Jesus loves you more than I do. Stay blessed. And I'll see you next week on Wednesday. I'll be teaching anointing upon. And today I taught anointing within. Next week, I will teach you anointing upon and what it is used for, what it needs to be done with. Thank you and have a blessed day. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.